and welcome to Art with Anna. Today we are talking about artist Joan Mitchell. So um, she is a woman artist. I think that's something that is very important to know because she was around um, mostly in the 60s. She was born in the 1920s, died in the 1990s, um, but a lot of her artwork came in the late 50s and 60s and um, during that time women really had no respect in the art world. Um, didn't really matter on what their art was like if they were women they didn't demand or they didn't deserve the respect that a man deserved. That's what they thought back then so. Um, but she in her own right became famous despite this hurdle and um, I think it's important to note that she was a woman because she did have to overcome a lot of that. Um, but also she didn't want to be known as a woman artist. She just wanted to be known as an artist. She didn't want gender to make someone view your art better or worse. She just wanted people to view her art as her art. So she's really cool. Let's get started by looking at the supplies we'll need. You will need two pieces of thick paper, um, thick white paper. I have two pieces of cardstock here. A few dishes or cups of water. Blue, red, green, and yellow paint. A medium sized paintbrush. We want the bristles to be half an inch to an inch wide. Last, we'll need something to mix paint on as a palette. I'm using a piece of recycled cardboard. Now, um, let's look at some of Joan Mitchell's work. So Joan Mitchell really only did expressionism, which is kind of neat. A lot of other artists kind of dabbled in realism and expressionism. She really stuck to um, abstract art. And a lot of her artwork was really big and on two panels. So our two pieces of cardstock are going to represent two panels of art. She'd do two or three. They'd be really big sections that would cover almost a whole wall. Now, um, some of her critics, but also she herself, describe her artwork as violent or um, aggressive. So her brush strokes really were quick and um, just had a lot of like motion behind them because a lot of, of times in her life she was feeling frustrated and I, a lot of that was because of her gender and how that was affecting um, her credibility in the art world. But another, other things were um, just turbulent times in her marriage, um, her mom getting cancer, all these, all these things really brought out kind of a angst, emotion in her artwork. So you'll see kind of big sweeps of color, or like very aggressive um, back and forth of color. So those are things to note about her. While we are painting, we're going to talk about a few different techniques that she uses. Um, the first, well, the main thing about her, she really uses paint in a lot of ways. She thins it out a lot, so it's almost like watercolor with um, water. So we have our cups of water here. We can add some of our paint to that, thin it out to give it kind of a different texture and make it more transparent. Um, sometimes she would really get paint on her paintbrush and press it really, really hard on the canvas, really dig it into the canvas. So that's something we can work on today is really pushing really, really hard down and then making that brush stroke. Um, other times she was very lightly touching the canvas, very fluid motions. Sometimes she just put the like, paint right on the canvas and didn't even touch it with a paintbrush. So she really uses paint in all the ways that you really can use paint, which I think is really cool. I think that's what makes her art so interesting um, to look at because it's very dynamic in the ways um, that she just uses her paint. Um, oftentimes she did use colors that were uh, complementary colors, so opposite on the color wheel. And um, so that's why we've picked kind of the red and red and greener opposites and then um, I chose yellow and blue. Really it's orange and blue, but we can make some orange out of our colors. Another thing she did a lot was just mixing color. So we'll work on that too. So let's um, get started. Basically what we're gonna do on our sheets of paper are just all those different types of ways you can use paint. Um, let's start with 
picking a color and adding it to water and kind of diluting that. So pick one of your colors, put some of it in a cup of water, mix it together, and we're gonna make somewhat of a watercolor. All right, so here I have a cup of water and I'm gonna take some paint and I'm gonna add it to it. I'm gonna take my blue, put some blue paint in there and mix it up. Now we've got this really, really thin paint that's a lot like watercolor. So the next thing we're gonna do is really put that in just spots around both of our sheets of paper. So these are two different sheets of paper, but we're thinking of them as one big canvas. So we'll go from one to the other, um, connecting them, and then we'll also just do some areas um, on each one. So one of Joan Mitchell's paintings is called Sunflowers, and that's kind of just blobs of color. You can kind of see that they are flowers. You can kind of guess that from it. Um, and she kind of uses a lot of blues and reds in that. So let's start with that. She kind of makes stars and just blobs of color that have kind of legs or arms coming out. That's the first thing I'm doing on here. That's what it looks like right now. So I'm gonna do one more kind of in the middle. And another maybe smaller one up here. So I've got these three blue um, flowery shapes. Um, the next thing I'm gonna do is just do some strokes of color. Um, sometimes I'm gonna press really, really hard and really Get the paint across really hard other times it's just gonna be nice and fluid right on top there's no rhyme or reason we're being really abstract um, when you can see the brush strokes in it that's how you know someone's pressed really really hard when it's just really light and you can't see individual brush strokes that's how you know something's painted really lightly Now the next technique I think we can use is just um, putting some paint um, directly onto the canvas without really touching it. So we're gonna have these, we have these blobs here. I'm gonna try to make, there we go. Um, just some shapes that are on there, just paint. Now we can spread some of those out, but we're gonna leave some of them really as just the blobs, just straight paint on canvas. That's another technique that she used quite a bit. Now another thing she's, she's quite known for is having kind of these sections of really um, thick paint that are really just pigmented, have a lot of pigment to them. Um, lots of times she would do this with dark colors, uh, and you could really see like anger in those. I'm going to use a lighter color because I'm not, my emotion right now is not angry. Um, but it would just be some thicker paint and really just an area, I'm making a mess, there we go, an area of really one color with then just some brush strokes past. So again here, I've, I've been pressing pretty hard down. You can really see the brush strokes in this paint and I am gonna take some to just go light, go light around. So I've mixed some color here too and some of the color is just um, as it is from the bottle and that's perfect. She does a lot of mixing colors like that also. So I'm going to mix my green and my blue. I have some kind of red orangey colors um, and the opposite on the color wheel of them would be kind of greeny blue colors. So I'm going to mix my green and my blue together here. You can use any colors you want. The techniques to really think about is just pressing hard with your brush, pressing lightly with your brush, using some watered down paint, and then using some paint straight from the bottle without touching it. I'm gonna do some mixing here of my green and my blue together. It's a little more blue because it seems pretty green still. Alright, 
I'm not going to go back over these sections that we made these flowers. Some it's going to show from the background, but um, some isn't. And my paper still had a lot of red in it and yellow. So it's kind of making like a purpley color, which is great too. I'm going to clean off my brush though in one of my empty cups of water. Dig in there with that blue green. In a painting called Noelle, um, she uses these reds and then a lot of these shades of greens. Um, and that's, that's a painting she's really known for and you're supposed to be able to see some emotion from that too. These opposite colors kind of fighting with each other. going to make a more solid section over here again. All right, so once you've really covered both panels um, with paint and you've used all the techniques, we can just set it uh, aside to dry and that that's pretty much it. Now, Joan Mitchell really did get a lot of her inspiration from some of the um, European artists. And although she grew up in America, she was born in Chicago and did art school in New York. Um, she did live for long periods of time in France. So sometimes people question her Americanness and her art. Um, and she did, she was inspired by a few artists and uh, one of those is Vincent van Gogh. So when we zoom into one of his paintings, you can see these tiny little brush strokes that are really made just by the flick of a wrist, just little bits. Um, and his canvases are a lot, a lot smaller too. Um, just kind of a, I don't know, maybe a two by three um, size canvases typically. Now, Joan Mitchell loved the idea of this. She loved seeing distinct brush strokes, um, but she wanted to kind of blow it up. So instead of brush strokes being just a flick of the wrist, she wanted them to be a flick of the elbow, so really big brush strokes, um, but with him in mind. And she's also very inspired by uh, Henri Matisse, who was really loved nature, and a lot of his color palettes and shapes came from nature, um, and she felt the same. So her color palettes are very natural, like pinks, yellows, greens, blues, things that you would find in flowers, in the ocean, on grass, um, just really inspired by that nature. So when you're making brush strokes, you wanna kind of flick the wrist, um, but also the elbow, because we wanna do big brush strokes, um, but also keep our color palette kind of a natural, natural color palette. So she was a abstract expressionist, which was kind of the first movement that put America on the map for art. Previous to that, really Europe had, Europe and Asia really had ruled the world um, as far as what people thought quality art was. So this was kind of the first art that came out of America that was unique and not really inspired by art created in other countries. Um, there are pretty much two themes of abstract expressionism. The first being that um, it is abstract, so uh, there's not anything really that looks realistic in abstract expressionism. The second me being um, just emotional. So abstract isn't the first part of the word, which means nothing looks realistic. And then expressionism is really talking about expressing your emotions. So abstract expressionism is just that, abstract shapes expressing your emotion. And that's pretty much central to Joan Mitchell's work. Um, she really embodies both of those principles and really is a 
really strong abstract expressionist. Now, something that's different from her is she's in a um, group called the second generation of abstract expressionists. Um, the first of the generations, um, you can think of people like Jackson Pollock with the, splint, the paint splattering. You can also think of Mark Rothko with his um, color squares. Both of those people were in the 40s and 50s and they were first generation abstract expressionists. Second generation is where Joan Mitchell falls into and that's more of in the 60s. So it's just kind of the second wave of people coming through. The main difference between the two generations is that second generation, although they did still use um, abstract shapes and um, brush strokes, they were still expressing emotion, but they used a lot of nature also. So colors were from nature a lot, um, or maybe there were hints at nature, but the, the nature was still expressing that emotion. So that's kind of the big difference from the first and second generations. All right, so this is I'm gonna to try to hold it up without the um, drops of paint dripping too much, so it'll be quick, but here is my final um, painting, my two panels, Joan Mitchell style. So I hope you guys enjoyed what you learned today um, and just had fun with paint. This one's so fun because there's no rhyme or reason. You don't have to stay in the lines. You're not trying to paint something specific. Um, you can just go crazy with paint and have a good time, um, have fun, enjoy color, and not feel restrained by it needing to look like any certain thing. So I think that's something that's really great about um, expressionism and the abstractness of it. So I hope you guys just enjoyed. I will see you guys again next week and um, we'll learn about new artists then. So thanks for learning about Joan Mitchell with me. See you later.